We are at the Miami International Airport, Concourse D. Y'all know I'm not necessarily a fan of MIA. I fly from neighboring Fort Lauderdale whenever possible. But Concourse D is one of the nicer ones, I must say. It uh, serves as a hub to American Airlines. And yes, this time I'm also traveling with my parents. Destination Toronto. We are airborne once again, and uh, nope, we are not uh, true nomads yet. We are still flying to places. We get a nice view of downtown Miami this time. Today, we are traveling to the great land of Canada. A few hours later, we land at the Toronto Pearson International Airport. We take a taxi to our hotel. We wake up at the Toronto Metropolitan Hotel. Many buildings around the city seem to have these uh, rooftop gardens. Our hotel is impeccably located on Chestnut Street, a few blocks away from the Nathan Phillips Square. You can barely see it from the room. We are walking on Dante Street to go for some breakfast. We walk the short distance. The circular structure to our left is a city hall. And we arrive to the square. The sundial sits at the Peace Garden, a memorial to the Hiroshima atomic bomb. City Hall is actually more like a double semicircle structure. We are at Nathan Phillips Square right here in Toronto. Behind me is the City Hall. And they're having some kind of uh, festival today. Yes, it appears they're going to have some kind of Filipino festival later on. This uh, reflecting pool is actually a skating rink during the winter, which I hear is most of the year in this latitude. The picturesque uh, building with the clock tower is the old city hall, which dates back to 1899. We walk along its side on Albert Street towards the Eaton Center. The Eaton Center is supposedly one of Toronto's main tourist attractions with 330 stores and restaurants, but let's face it, besides the pretty glass roof, it's nothing more than an oversized shopping mall. Moving right along. We exit the Eaton Center and walk north on Young Street towards the Dundas Young Square in order to take the subway towards the harbor front, which is where we're going. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, a Young Street is considered the longest one in the world with over 1,000 miles. Young Dundas Square is Toronto's version of Times Square, if you will, with all the neon and LED signs. The subway line is undergoing construction, but they have this uh, special bus line running along uh, its route. We ride on the bus, going south. We get off by Alan Lambert Galleria, which is part of the Brookfield Place office complex. It's often called the Crystal Cathedral of Commerce because of its unique architecture. It was designed by Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava. We are walking on the Alan Lambert Galleria towards uh, Bay Street. And then we're gonna take the ferry to Toronto Island. Yes, these Canadians have uh, some cool garbage cans. They also have uh, some great architecture in this city. 
we continue walking south towards the harbor front, under the railroad tracks. It is our intention to catch the ferry to the Toronto Islands from this Harbor Square Park. We arrive at the terminal. The round trip costs seven dollars for adults with discounts for seniors and uh, juniors. We are taking the Center Island Ferry. Along the way, we enjoy these great views of the Toronto skyline, which is really the main reason we took the ferry. We are riding on the ferry to Center Island, Toronto Island. The Toronto Islands are like an oasis in the big city, with this uh, lush vegetation, the pollen floating around in the late spring. I must say, I'm impressed. I heard about it first in the Amateur Traveler podcast and then read about it on the Moon Guide to Ontario. But I must say, this is a really cool place. They have an amusement park, a duck pond, a farm, a marina, even a beach. All kinds of activities for the family. Unfortunately, our time here is limited. After all, we only came here for the view, right? We cross over this uh, tiny bridge onto Olympic Island for this uh, other great view of the Toronto skyline, even with a swan. Feels like we ought to stay here all day, but we must get back on the ferry as other points of interest await us. We are now returning to Toronto. Toronto has a great public transit system. Besides the subways and the buses, they have an extensive network of these uh, trolleys. We got off by the St. James Cathedral to change trolleys. We are going towards the distillery district for lunch. The distillery district uh, was once uh, home to the largest distillery in the world around the mid-1800s. Nowadays it's a historic site uh, with many art galleries, restaurants and shops. We eat at the famous Mill Street Brewery. and they actually brew their own excellent beer. And uh, we try the Canadian delicacy, the poutine. It is basically French fries uh, with cheese turds, gravy and meat, but it's amazingly delicious. Moving along, we walk towards the trolley stop to go back. They have these uh, bicycles for rent uh, all around the city. And our ride finally arrives. This morning we bought a 24-hour family pass, which is good for all forms of public transit. Very convenient and economic as well. We are back by the Eaton Center and Young uh, Donda Square. There is uh, some kind of protest going on about human rights in Iran. It is a very vibrant city center, as you can see. 
We take another trolley towards the hotel, which is only a couple of blocks away, but we don't feel like walking. And since we have the day pass, the ride is free. We are going to take a break and then go back out. Later in the day, we walk toward uh, University Avenue. Here we take the subway that will get us near the CN Tower. One thing about Canadians, they are the nicest people in the world. But uh, the ones we met had no sense of distance or directions. They went out of their way to walk out with us and tell us where to go, but they didn't really know how to get there. Eventually, we did find uh, the CN Tower using the iPhone. While we wait for the elevators, we get to see these uh, informational videos about the CN Tower. Hey, welcome to the CN Tower. Your views are going to be in front of the side and then underneath your feet is up. Well, once we get going, we're going to be traveling at a speed of 22 kilometers per hour or 15 miles per hour, giving us just 58 seconds to get to the observation level. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> then I walk across the glass floor. Oh my god. This is really scary. We hang out at the main pod, which is at an altitude of 342 meters or 1,122 feet. We have finally made it to the sky pod. Uh, the sky pod is the highest point you can throw uh, in this uh, CN Tower. You went to our, uh, as you can see, we are really, really, really high. The sky pod sits at a staggering 446 meters or 1,465 feet. On a clear day, you can see Niagara on the other side of the lake. The CN Tower uh, held the record for the tallest freestanding structure for over 30 years until Dubai's Burj Khalifa surpassed it in 2007. As night falls, uh, the lights are turned on and it's almost time for us to go. Now I'm green. We're saying goodbye to the CN Tower. Come on, change color. I want to see myself change color. I'm gonna change. <laughs> and now, I don't know what color I am. Down we go. And with that, we turn in for the night. We have a long day ahead of us tomorrow. In the morning, we go back to the Eaton Center to pick up our rental car from the thrifty office, which apparently doesn't open until 10. Since uh, we have an hour to kill, uh, we decide to walk around a little bit. In Canada, they have these really cool mailboxes. We pass by the Metropolitan United Church. We also find out why the city looks so clean all the time. We also pass by this uh, canine gourmet festival on the way to the St. Lawrence Market, which unfortunately is closed on Sunday. We see the St. James Cathedral one more time 
and an entrance to the famous path underground city. And once again, we pass by the old city hall, on the way back to a deserted Eton Center. Guess what? Our car is ready. We go pick up my parents at the Metropolitan Hotel and we depart on our red Dodge Caliber. Not my favorite vehicle in the world, let me tell you, but that's what they consider full size, I guess. Not an outstanding product, let me tell you. We turn left or west on Dundas Street towards uh, Chinatown. To our left, this building is the Art Gallery of Ontario, with its newly constructed facade. We continue west on Dundas Street, into the heart of Chinatown, which uh, dates back to the 19th century, and is one of the largest ones in North America, and one of the several Chinatowns in the city. We are by the corner of Spadina and Dundas. Uh, if we were to continue northwest, we would encounter the Kensington Market, which is a very interesting neighborhood. But we will save that for another trip. Right now, we are driving towards Casaloma. We drive north on Spadina Avenue, crossing the College Street. The Knox College is the building in the middle of the traffic circle, and it houses the offices for the University of Toronto. The actual university is to our right. Let's uh, make sure the camera is on, shall we? Yes, it is, obviously. <laughs> After Bloor Street, Spadina Avenue turns into Spadina Road. This neighborhood is called the Annex, and it's an upper middle class neighborhood. Very nice. We turn left into McPherson Avenue and right on Kendall. And we finally arrive at Casaloma. Casaloma is uh, Spanish for Hill House. The building was constructed in 1914 as a Gothic Revival style house. Originally, the residence of Sir Henry Mill Pellet, a famous Canadian dude, famous mainly for this house and for bringing hydroelectric power to Toronto. This is one of Toronto's most popular tourist attractions. We don't have time to go inside though, because today we are going to Niagara Falls, a much more coveted attraction if you ask me. And time is of the essence, so with that we are going to say goodbye to Toronto for now. Our next video will be, you guessed it, Niagara Falls. Meanwhile, see you on the road. By the way, thank you for watching and remember you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, the music for all of our previous episodes is now available in iTunes and Amazon and everywhere else, so check it out. You can also stream it in Spotify and elsewhere. I am Robert Morales, your host, signing off. See ya! <laughs>